Hello class. Today we're going to be learning about a new number, a new number called I. We're going to perform operations with that, and we're going to see how we use it within the quadratic equation solving. Let's, let's kind of go back, back to the days when we had whole numbers, and in elementary school we added and subtracted them. You know, we'd add them together, subtract them, but sometimes we, but then we get to this point 2 minus 5, and we have a problem here because, you know, uh, how do we represent that with the whole numbers? And back in the elementary school days, we just kind of ignored this problem. But later on, in, in kind of May middle school, we expanded uh, the number set so that we can deal with 2 minus 5. We added this kind of concept of a negative number. So, you know, 2 minus 5, we now said is negative 3. We had a solution to this problem. 2 minus 5. And so now we had all these integers here. We expanded our number system, and yet we still had another problem. Okay, we saw the other day x squared minus 9. If we solve it, we get two solutions, uh, plus or minus 3. But how about this one? When we take x squared plus 9 and, and try to find a solution to that, we get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 9. What do we do here? Uh, we don't have a solution for this. And and we've been stuck. We just kind of ignored this type of, of problem in the past. x squared plus 9, we just said there's no solution. But today, we're going to say there is uh, a solution. It's just not a real solution. We're going to expand the number system once more, and actually for the final time today. So to fix this kind of problem, I'll call it, uh, we really need to address the question, what is the square root of negative 1? We need to come up with something. So we're going to define a new number, just like we defined this whole idea of a negative number. We're going to define the idea of the square root of negative 1. We're going to call this the number i. It, it is literally a number. Um, um, and so if I take this um, square root of negative 1 and I multiply it by itself, i times i will give me back negative 1. Okay, We call this the imaginary unit. It's not really an imaginary number. I mean, we, we do call it that, it, uh, but it is a very much a real number. Okay, I don't want to get away from the fact it's a number. i is a number, um, just like any other number, I guess. Um, now, now we can deal with this problem. What is the square root of negative 9? Let's break this up into the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 9. And now we could say, oh, well, the square root of uh, negative 1 is i. And then, you know, of course, the square root of 9 is 3. So we write this uh, typically, uh, the convention is to write it like this, 3i with the imaginary unit on the the, the right-hand side of the number. Here's some more examples. A square root of 16, uh, negative 16 is 4i. Square root of negative 49 is 7i. And even like square root of uh, negative 3, we can't deal with the square root of 3 part of it, but we can deal with the negative portion here. So we have i times the square root of 3. And you notice we kind of switch conventions here. Um, we, we write it this way instead, and and, and basically, we write it like this because it could be a little confusing. If we were to write it like, uh, you know, square root of 3 times i, you know, is it really, you know, is, is it really over it or not? To avoid that convent kind of confusion, we have the convention of writing it like that. Okay, why don't you do these on your own, and I'll show the answers in 3, 2, 1. So let's kind of do a summary of um, all the numbers now we know. We actually call all these numbers the complex numbers. So back in the days, we had our whole numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3. Then we expanded that. We added the negative numbers, negative 3, you know, negative 2, and uh, oh, I should put a negative 1 here. Um, and then 
then dot 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 you know so we had negative numbers as well then we uh, talked about rational numbers instead of just integers uh, an integer divided by integer was our rational numbers anything that can be represented as a fraction of integers then we said well there's numbers outside of this set we called them irrational, things like square root of 2, uh, things like pi, things like e, which cannot be represented as a fraction. And altogether, this represented what we called the real numbers. So now we're going to talk about this new number, i, and we could have imaginary, pure imaginary numbers. Um, you know, so we have a 6i, six, 6 times i, for example. Um, we could add real numbers to it so we have 3 plus 6i and so these are imaginary numbers and we call all of this together the complex numbers and we write complex numbers in kind of what we call standard form where we have the real portion and the imaginary portion here so um, the real portion here and then the convention is plus bi where b is also a real number so A and B are real numbers, and I is our imaginary. Um, how do we do operations on complex numbers? It's, it's kind of easy. Um, we really just treat, um, we, we deal with the real terms, and then we deal with the imaginary terms. We add like terms together. So in this case here, if we want to add these two complex numbers together, the real terms are 3 and 7, so we add them together. The imaginary terms are 2i and 5i, so we add those together, and this is our answer. And this is in our standard form, um, the a plus bi standard form that I talked about over here. Multiplication. Same idea. Let's look at this case here. Um, let's kind of foil it out, multiply all the different terms. We can, in a sense, treat i like a variable. And then at the very end, we, whenever we see an i squared or something like that, uh, i squared, remember, is negative 1. So let's just treat it like a variable. You know, pretend for now it's x. And just multiply this all out, and we get this term here, or this expression here. Now we see i squared, in, you know, if, it, if this were like a pure variable, we would just leave x squared as it is. But i squared, we don't want to leave that as it is. We know that i squared is negative 1, so we want to replace this. Oh, okay, so we'll add our like terms here, um, the imaginary terms, 71i. But in the case over here, i squared, let's replace that with a negative 1. So now this is a real number. Uh, let's add all the like terms together, um, 30, negative 36 and 14. We add together negative 22 plus 71i. Okay? Simple concept. So try these out. Um, just be careful with these negative signs. You know, remember to distribute the negative signs across. I'll give the answers in 3, 2, 1. Okay, solving quadratic equations with complex numbers. Now we can solve any quadratic equation problem. Let's look at this problem right here. Uh, previously, we would get x squared is equal to negative 10. Um, and we take the square root of it. We get now x is equal to plus or minus. We can deal with the square root of negative 10. The square root of negative 10 is now i times the square root of 10. Okay, don't forget the plus or minus, by the way. Uh, let's do a little more complex one. We have a case here. Um, let's uh, use the method of square roots. Let's uh, add 13 to both sides. Uh, let's now take the square root. Uh, but when we take the square root, we have a negative inside the square root. But that's okay, because we can deal with it with our complex numbers. Uh, subtract 4 from both sides. Oh, and, and simplify the, the expression here. And we get our answer. Uh, x is equal to negative 4 plus or minus 4i root 2. And you notice how I put the 4 in front of the i, I put the root 2 after the i. Just convention, it's not a super, super big deal, but it is nice to kind of learn these mathematical uh, language conventions. 
Uh, that's it. Um, that's our lesson. Why don't you give these a try here? Um, I'll show the answers in three, two, one. Have a good day, everybody.